All right, so let's get uh, rolling here this evening. Uh, this is how we're going to do our conference calls uh, from here on out. Uh, the first 20 minutes, I'm going to talk about the indicator. And then the following 20 minutes, I'm going to talk about the, um, the strategy. And then during the week, I will talk about both. And um, you guys can feel free to uh, email me directly with any questions that you have. Okay, so let's get going uh, this morning. Not this morning, uh, this afternoon, this evening. Is uh, let's talk about uh, the four setups first of all in the first 20 minutes, uh, and then I want to get into the strategy, how we can use a strategy, automated strategy for our entries, our trails, and our exits. Okay, so let's get uh, rolling right away. Uh, I have four setups in the in the uh, in the room. We went over this this morning in the trade room, and uh, we'll be, we go over this every single uh, morning at 8:15 in the morning on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. So at 8.15, uh, I walked through a lot of live examples today on the NQ. In the NQ today, we were looking for first wave setups. That's the top setup. And I'm going to go over that this evening. This conference call is going to be about the first wave. So for the first 20 minutes, I'm going to go over the first wave, what we need to do. And then at the next 20 minutes, I will go over the first wave, how we can use automated setups to get in the first wave also. The second conference call that we'll have next week will be based upon our momentum, either our momentum setup or our FZR setup, our slingshot. So we'll go over our slingshot in, in one conference call, and then the next conference call will go over my momentum setup, and then the fourth, we will go over the failure zone setup. So these are the only setups you need to understand according to our methodology. We've been doing the same exact setups um, in the room, uh, basically the first wave, FZR, Momo, and then a failure. Uh, the trend trades, I call them trend trades, are the first three setups. Uh, a counter trend trade would be the failure zone setup, and I'll go over that on the failure zone on um, how that works uh, also um, as far as the failure zone goes. So uh, the first setup we'll go over tonight is the first wave setup. Uh, with the methodology that we have, this if you learn any setup in the room, the first one to learn and to get good at is the first wave. It's one of the easiest setups to recognize on any futures, stocks, forex, uh, currency, and then also crypto markets. Uh, one of the easiest ones to see because of our zones. We have two zones. We have a deep zone and we have a shallow zone. And what we want to look for is we want to pair these up and you want to look for the momentum in the first wave to come up in the shallow zone, which I'll go over, and then our um, FZR zone and our failure zone will be in the deep zone. So let's first of all go over the first wave setup. Uh, if you're new to the software, um, this is the first trade you need to master because this is a setup that's very easy to see, but the accuracy can be very uncanny due to the accuracy of these zones. These zones were uh, tested uh, and over a 30-year back test on these zones. Um, and these zones can be extremely uh, accurate to the trader if used properly with the overall setups. So um, our stops are always two ticks, uh, are two ticks above or below a swing low. And I'll show you that on all these setups. So let's get into the first wave setup. A first wave setup basically says this, and let's get it right, dig right into the into our first our our, our setup this week that we're going to talk about. The first wave setup. What is it? What happens is is the market changes sentiment during the day, where supply overtakes demand, or demand overtakes supply. If you have not read my over 150 page PDF, I talk about this uh, uh, immensely in the PDF. I talk about how you, uh, you know, when over, uh, supply overtakes demand or, over, or demand overtakes supply, they will either mark the market up or mark the market down. Well, these zones are real neat because what they can do is they can tell us of an impending possible what's called trend change in the market or where the market changes direction. This is where a lot of buy stops get taken, a lot of sell stops get taken because the counter trend traders get taken on the other side of the market. So. That's why our three main setups are trend trades. They're looking to buy and sell retracements with overall trend direction. Um, and then our counter trend trade is a failure of the zone, which we had one here, which I'll show you in a second. 
but the first way set up is, is pretty simple. What we want to do is we want as an indicator, and this can be this can be strictly indicator based. We have an indicator that fires these arrows and an audible alert will come up. So when these arrows come up, if you have your speakers on, it alerted alerted you to take this long this morning and alerted you to take this long this morning also. All right, on your speakers on your computer. All right. If you know what the first wave looks like, that was a great opportunity to extract some ticks in the NQ this morning. This is the NQ. I'll go over the S&P next real quick before we go over the strategy. But when that fires the arrow fired, it told you you were in a qualified first wave trade. Now, what qualifies a first wave trade? The first thing you got to have on a first wave trade is you got to have a trend change. It's got to go green to red, which is here, red to green, sorry, or it's got to go the opposite, which is red to green. All right, this these zones. There's a shallow zone that's comprised of these couple lines, these two lines, these three lines, and then there's a deeper zone, which is your outer zone here. Your first wave setup you want to see happen at at or above the shallow zone because shallow zones, uh, what we have found, are nice continuation trades in the direction of overall zone direction. So the first thing we want to see is we want to see a color change. We want to see red to green. As soon as the zone turns green, you're looking for the first wave setup. This is in order of importance. If you do not understand how to trade the first wave setup, you should not move on to our number two or FZR setup and our momentum setup. All right, you should not move on to these unless you understand the first wave. Because the first wave, especially in the NASDAQ futures and these other volatile markets, you get a lot of setups during the day, and the accuracy can be really in your favor if you know what you're doing looking at the qualifying signal line below. And that's I'm going to show you how we do this. So if we have red zones and we turn into green, we're looking for buy retracements. The first thing you tell yourself is, hey, hey, I went from red to green. I immediately am looking for a first wave setup. Or I go red to green, I'm looking for a first wave buy setup, red to green, first wave buy setup. If I was green and I turned, uh, if I was red and I turned uh, green, or if I'm green I turn red, if I'm green and turn red, I look for the first sell setup. So this is looking for a first wave setup. What you want to do after you turn red to green is that you want to see, obviously, price will start taking off. We want to look for the first retracement. The first retracement is comprised of two things. It's going to be an opposite color uh, Rinko bar that turns red or a doji. So you're going to see a doji where the open is equal to the close, or you're going to see a red reversal bar or reversal Rinko. That tells us that we are now in a qualified first wave setup. However, we're going to use our signal lines below. Our signal lines are going to tell us if the market is in a stronger or weaker position. If I am, if my trend indicator, because these zones are great for trend, so you don't counter trend trade the market, they're great for knowing where the market should stop on shallow retracements and deeper. I'll get into that in a second. But as, if they're green, we're looking to buy. Once I turn a red opposite color Rinko or a Doji, I'm watching this oscillator. I have two oscillators below. I call them signal lines because it's giving me a signal to confirm if the market is a stronger or weaker position. This is a very, very simple setup to do, and this is something that traders just need to follow what I'm saying here. The, the thick signal line, the thicker signal line, I had this in, in, in a little in blue, that is our larger signal line, and then the thin signal line is our smaller signal line. So we give you the settings on how to set this up as members, and what you'll want to do is you'll want to see when we get the first retracement right here, when you get the red reversal bar, you want two things to happen. You want one, I want to stay above the shallow zone. The shallow zone is my zone here. And my, I don't want to get into the deep zone for a first wave setup. As long as I'm above the shallow zone, I'm good. And secondly, most importantly, I want this larger signal line that's blue. Uh, you, you'll have magenta, this thicker line on yours. You can change your color what you want. I want this above 80. I want to be above 80. Okay, you can take trades all the way down above 65. 
the best momentum setup you're going to get is if that large signal line is above 80 at the time of a green reversal bar when that arrow fires and your audible alert alerts you on your speakers that an arrow fires off that that's a possible setup as long as that oscillator is above 80 you have a buy setup right there that's called a first wave setup now what you can do to qualify the trade anymore I have a smaller signal line it's a thinner uh, line that line is if it stays above 65 anything above 65 is a first wave setup for a bull so above 65 a greater than 65 we are in a bull run all right the best is above 80 so what we need to do for our signal line signal line must be at least above 65 65 bull all right we want to be above that we want to be above 65 bull here on a pullback what I like to do is I like to see the larger signal line stay above 80 and a smaller signal line stay above 65 that gives you double confirmation that this market could potentially take off in that direction okay what you don't want to happen as we retrace on these red boxes I mean red red wrinkles as they're turning red 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 if this signal line the the big thick one which is our largest signal line if it goes below 65 and you have not got a green reversal bar there's no signal there's no setup to enter the trade and I'll show you how we can do that on the automated trading also so that's our threshold right there at 65 the 65 line we have for you if this thick signal line pulls back below 65 before you get a reversal bar then there's no trade however this is a great setup because this morning and we watch a lot of live trades for about two hours doing this on different Rinko sizes which I'll go over in a second if this shows that this larger signal line is above 80 and it's pegged above 80 still above 80 we get the reversal here at the pullback red Rinko's or doji as long as that signal line doesn't dip below 65 minimum the best if you, the best momentum is you want that large signal line above 80 I'll show you how you can you can put whatever number you want in there on the auto as long as it stays above 80 you're good to go okay you don't have to have this smaller signal line stay above 65 but what it does it gives you another dual confirmation that this market could take off so the most important is the thick signal line right here this thick signal line that's the key if it gets above 80 and stays above 80 it can come all the way down minimum to 65 that's a weaker trade but it can do it but if it goes below 65 both before I get a green reversal bar when that arrow fires there's no setup because it's a deeper retracement and there's no momentum on our signal line below but as long as I stay above 80 on my thick signal line then you're good to go if you want dual confirmation you can put a second signal line in my smaller signal line it has to at least stay above 65 now what you want to see is which well, I'll show you in the S&P today it caught some great S&P trades today doing this technique on dual signal line confirmation with zone trend which I'll show you in a second it caught some real nice trades today on the S&P as long as my larger signal line though stays above 80 and my smaller signal line stays above 65 you have a nice qualified first wave trade do I need this secondary confirmation no I want my large signal line at least staying above 65 but the best setup you can get is if you're above 80 on your large signal line and at least your thin or your smallest signal line is above 65 okay signal line must be at least above for a bull on the setup if I look at this next setup that happened first of all we had a I'll show you a failure trade in a second but we're talking about first wave trades tonight but this is a failure setup at the outer zone which is very easy to see I'll show you that but we had a trend change from right here from red to green again look at the similar uh, uh, the similarities of the same setup 
we had red to green, red to green. We have our signal line here that went above 80, right there, above 80. It's pegged at 100 right there, right? It's moving. On the pullback, the first red reversal Rinko or Doji, it starts pulling back. When that arrow fires off and your audible alert goes off on your computer, and that turns a green Rinko, meaning we're pulling ourselves in the trade, to qualify it, did our large 80 signal line, I mean above 80, did our large signal line stay above 80? Yes, it's above 80. Our secondary signal line is above my threshold 65. Now I want you to take a look at this because this happens over and over and over again in many different markets. Look at the relationship, how we stay above 65, stay above 65 on my secondary, on my uh, small signal line, but look at the larger signal line. It looks identical, right? It's the same exact setup. You're going to see this happen over and over and over again. Okay? So that is key for your first wave setup. Watch for red to green. You have a setup coming up. Red to green. Where's my first wave setup? Or green to red, which I'll show you in a second. Where's my sell setup? Where's my first wave setup? That's what you're doing. Because what happens is this. These two marry up together. And these two marry up together. The failure zone and the FZR, because what happens is you get the first wave set up as a shallow retracement. And my momentum, which I'll go over next week, these marry up together because you want them both above the shallow retracement when they happen. And then we don't even look for a failure zone set up or an FZR until we get into the outer zone here, which I'll have a conference call on each one of these separately by themselves. But we won't even look for a FZR slingshot until we get into this outer zone. Or we won't look for a failure trade. This had to be a failure trade. Same thing, you get to the outer zone. If, if I'm pegged below 20 now, and my secondary signal line is also pegged below 40, then it's telling you that you got a failure trade, you can trade that setup. So I can, with these four setups, I, I, I can see daily where the market should be going all day long. Every single movement we get on any kind of futures, any kind of oil, gold, it doesn't matter. YM, this works really good on the RTY, Russell 2000, S&P, you know, NQ works really well. With these four setups, I can dictate where order flow is going. Because it starts with the first wave first, it always starts with the first wave. So the first thing you ask yourself, as soon as I get a trend change from red to green, where's my first wave? You should master this setup. If you're new to my trading room and new to our setups, that's the first trade you should master right there. Because it comes up over and over and over again. And it's so easy to qualify watching our signal lines with our shallow zones. We want price on a retracement to stay above this shallow zone or below the shallow zone on a retracement. We want it to stay right in there, right above here, because we know how accurate our zones are. We want it to stay there on the retracement. We want it to stay above there to pull us in when these uh, signal lines confirm, right? We don't worry about uh, the FZR setup or the momentum setup, right? or the FZR and the failure setup until we get to the outer zone. Until we get to the outer zone here, then we'll look for a failure setup or a slingshot right, which I'll go over that in a total different conference call. It's in my PDF. So the first trade to master, master the first wave setup. We went over it, like I said, for two hours today. Friday, we went over it um, from 12 to 12. We we're talking to members today on the 140 chart. It was nine for nine on trades on Friday based upon the first wave setup. So the accuracy is really uncanny when you, when you know how to follow it. What the stops on it. So when you do get stopped out on this setup, we want to make sure that we're below the swings. So we want to make sure our stop is two ticks below the swing. Here would be a stop, just in case 
price action gets stopped out, and we want to make sure price action is two ticks below the swing there. And then you can trail on a smaller Renko bar or two bars, two candles back, and trail all the way up as price moves up two back. Because guess what? Your Renko bar should never close below the last Renko, or it's going to change trend. So we can trail that way also. And I show you how to do that in the room when we are looking at live setups in the room. Okay. So that is how we trade the indicator on the first wave setup. How can we do it through the strategies? How can we use a strategy with entries? Okay. So you can use the indicator and use chart trader and have an enter here with an automated stop on chart trader that Ninja has in an audit, auto, automatic ATM where break even plus one after your first target and then it trails so many ticks it goes up it trails we all know how to do that if you don't know how to do that look up ninja trader ATM I do go over that in the room and I'll show you what I like to numbers but you can use the ATM how can we do it through automated order management trading system so what I just told you this is the NQ again is we want to try to put ourselves in a position of stronger and weaker positions in the market. So how can we use a strategy with our first wave momentum indicator? Well, what I say the first thing we need to happen, we need a trend change. So here's a buy setup. We went from red to green. And here's a sell setup where we went from green to red. Now, you probably ask about red to green and here red to green. Well, guess what? This is a chop environment and look at our indicator, our, our signal lines. It never gave us no signals. So these are no trades. You don't trade chop sideways market. You won't trade that because it doesn't qualify. So the first thing we want to do since we're talking about first wave trades and how we can use a strategy for it, we can actually watch for the trend change to come in on these larger Rinko sizes and I'll show you which ones I prefer I I'll show you here in a second but we can let the trend change, trend change come in and then we can toggle on our strategy and it will automatically enter for us with a stop with the trail and with our targets that we put in on this buy setup and sell setup. this is our automated order a trade management software so let's take a look at this so let's take over left here I put this up to show you what a buy and sell looks like both together we come into a stronger position in the market right first of all for the first wave what do we have to happen that's you need to learn this setup first the first wave next week we'll go over either the momentum setup or the FCR how to pull in on a slingshot but this is the first trade you really need to understand because it's easy to see and it happens over and over again in the market. So we go red to green. We're looking for a buy setup. If you put on the strategy to, to, to pull yourself in on the strategy, if you put your parameters in the strategy, all you got to do is double click on, the, on, the, on your control center, double click, and you can click it on and click it off with one click. So you can click it on and click it off so if I get a trend change here and I see I'm getting into a stronger position where my larger signal line is getting above my 80 remember it's got to be above the 80 it's got to stay above the 80 when we get that reversal in the arrow prints so when you get the trend change and this is one of my favorite times I always say 10 to 4 to around 10 after 4 that 20 minute window you get that institutional usually a window dressing or push and so here's what happened from 1550 the trade actually created at 1559 so if you look at this that's that last 10 minute window dressing and power hour power hours 930 to 11 it's usually 930 1030 but I go all the way up to 11 in the morning 930 to 11 Eastern and then power hours 3 to uh, 4 which I call 3 to 410 and then uh, last 10 minutes you get this little window dressing push so what you get you get this nice little push above right you start pushing above in a stronger position so remember what I told you about the first wave after you get the first red to green you got a possible setup get ready 
for a setup in the market. When that happens, you can click on your strategy tab in the Ninja Trader. And by one click, it's turned on right here at this time at 1551. So at nine minutes later, it activated the trade. You want to keep that strategy on until what happens? Until this large signal line goes below what before you get pulled in on the automated uh, trade system. You don't want the signal line to go to below 65. So before it gets pulled in, if this signal line jets down through 65, so if we jet down through 65, then you do not want to turn on that strategy. I mean, you want to turn off that strategy, right? Because now the parameters are telling you, it's telling you right away that you do not want to take that setup. All right, so you do not want to pull yourself in a position as far as um, turning on your, uh, your strategy. So let's take a look at it real quick. Let me pull this up. I got many, a lot of them on here already. All right, so if I go over here and you have your trader, right? You're going to have this above your chart. Just one click, let's, cl let's click it off. When I go red to green and I see my indicator, whatever chart you trade off of, all right, you can trade off. Now, the best, let's go over Rinko sizes. I like the 140, the 135, the 130, 125. Those are my best Rinko sizes, and 120 would be the lowest I like as far as the NQ goes. The S&P, I like the 13 and the 20, which I'll go over here in a few. When this goes red to green, you have a possibility of a what? Of a first wave trade. When that oscillator gets above, when it gets above 80, and you see a trend change happen from red to green, all right, when that happens, what you can do is it takes one click, you click it on. Your automated trade entry system will turn to green. Here it turns green right there. So you turn that on at 1550. It will not take trades unless you specifically tell the parameters that you want it to take trades with. All right, to get used to the automated system, you can obviously run SIM first and make sure you understand. And I wouldn't do big contracts. I do the micros. And you don't have to do four contracts. I can show you here in a second how you can do one contract or two contracts or three contracts or four contracts, five contracts, six contracts, whatever. But I wouldn't turn this live until you guys get in the rhythm of it. But my point is, if you don't want to just use Chart Trader to enter on these setups, you can just use the indicator with the automated management system. Once I get above here, once I get above 80, I'm in a stronger position, right? Stronger position. So you can turn it on at 15.50, especially if you're looking at larger Renko sizes, the 140, you know, the 135, 35, 130. You got plenty of time. When we start cranking up, if you have it turned on, it will be green. If it's turned off, see this enable button? It will not be green. So you're going to know when the strategy is up and running. As soon as you see it turn green, red to green, and my larger signal line is above A, I can enable it. It takes one click. It's turned on. It would enter that position. Once it enters the position, all right, it's automatically going to enter for you. It's going to have your stop, automated stop, and it's going to have your automated trail, and it's going to have your automated targets automatically. You don't do anything else. Let the automated trade system do all the work for you. Let it have your stop. Your trailing stop is going to be your hard stop. So this is where it's going to be your hard stop. So right when you enter here, this is going to be your hard stop. Now, I do have a feature in it, which I'll show you inside of in a second, how we want to do this. I have a feature that you it's the best of both worlds. Either it hits your trailing stop first, or you can have a real tight stop, just two ticks under that swing low if you want. Whatever hits first. It hits your hard stop two ticks below, right? Or it hits your trailing stop first. If you want your trailing stop as your initial stop, as your hard stop, then you put your stop, your hard stop way out. 
put it out to 50, 60 ticks, which you'll never hit because your trailing stop will, will click in. But you can make this trail real tight, and I'll just show you that in a second also. You can make it loose or tight to get larger runs or what have you. This one I have a 12 tick first target, 24 second target, 36 third target, and I got 1,000 ticks on my last target. Why 1,000 ticks? Because there are times on different Rinko sizes you may get long at 10.30 in the morning and stay long all the way to 4 o'clock because they'll keep trailing and trailing and trailing and trailing and your stop will just keep you in, right? So I like the last at least contract out of 1,000 ticks to each its own. You guys know your risk tolerance and you can do that. My point is, is that let's look at this trade over here. Let's see when we go red to green or, or green to red. If I go red, if I go green to red again over here, green to red, and the market starts moving down, all right, and you turn it on. Let's say it goes green to red, and you switch it on, and then you see that we're in a weaker position. Both oscillators are weak right here. They're very weak, right, because in here, when you go green to red, if you're in the middle right here of these zones, you don't want to turn this software on. You're only turning this software on if you first trend change and you're getting outside below 20 to sell or above 80 to buy. So if that happens right here, when you go red to green, green to red, I'm sorry, and you jet through your 20, you can turn the software on with your pre preset targets and so on and your preset trail and so on and let it do its work for you. So that's one way you can do it. So you can do indicator-based. Or you can do indicator and let the auto management system get you in. If you strictly do indicator, then what you want to do is you want to um, you want to make sure that you use Chart Trader and an ATM trail and what have you to use that. Now, like I said, what you can do is you can set up a quadrant of uh, I, I showed this in the trade room today on live on, on a lot of live setups. So just come in the trade room. And I'll show you because I show you I show traders how to do the Nasdaq, and I put a 140 in the upper left quadrant, the 135, and the middle I got the 130, 125, and I put the 120 on the far right, because these stronger, weaker positions on different Rinko sizes will hit at different times. If I'm using a small Rinko chart, and I'm in a stronger position on my signal line, and my zones are green, shallow, and they're above the shallow, it's telling me that's the market strong to the upside. So here, and this is weak to the downside. I mean, look at it. Very weak, very strong. If I see this, it's happened on the S&P day for a lot of S&P trade points to the upside. We saw that right there, and I'll show you in a second. And this would be to the downside. So when they're pegged, the key is this, though. You want to stay on the side of the shallow zone for first wave trades and Momo trades. Then you want on the deep zone, you want the FZR slingshots. And then you want the failure trades, which are going to a total conference call by themselves. This is strictly talking about uh, the FZRs, okay? Uh, not the SCRs, but the first wave trades. Let's get into the strategy real quick. Let me show you how we're going to do the strategy now. So the strategy, you can dictate how you want to do it. So let's turn this off real quick, and let's look at the strategy. So what we can do is I just told you the bull bear line. I have dual confirmation. So here's bear line, bull line one, bull bear line two. So if you got the bull bull bear line one, is I have seven, set to seven. The bull bear line two set at 21. So if you noticed, my big signal line, which I have a bull bear line two, is at 21. That's my big signal line. What do I have them set at? Well, I got my bull two, which is here. My 21 is my favorite one. I want it above 80. So it's not going to take any longs if it's not above 80. And it's not going to take any shorts if it's not below 20 on my bull bear line too. Well, then what you can do is say, hey, on when I get starting to get pulled in, it's not going to take a trade unless my bull bear line one agrees with bull bear line two. Meaning I got the seven signal line, but remember I said the bull bear line two here, the thin one can at least stay below 40 for sells and at least stay above 65 for buys. So I put my bull at 65 and I put my bear at 40. Now what you're telling yourself, you're telling the, the trade management software that 
you're not going to take any trades when I turn you on if my at least my signal line's not below 20 for sells or above 80 for buys. All right? So you're telling it what to do here when you turn it on. It's just not looking for the first retracement. It's actually looking to qualify that trade. All right? So that lets us know this is how you can you can you can do what you want to do as far as if you want to have it in a more stronger position, you can do this. Let's say that you just want one signal line, not two. Well, what you could do is you can go 21 here, 21, and I'm going to say bear's got to be below 20, and my bull's got to be above 80. That's telling you you just want one signal line. When my big signal lines are above or below 80 or 20, then it's going to pull me in the trade, right? Or you can use both signal lines and say, hey, I want double confirmation. But it won't take double signal lines if this thin one is out of your parameters. So you can do that also. So you can do a single signal line and, and, and double the, the, same, um, the same bear and bull line, or you can do separate and have them both agree. I could put seven, which is my bear below 40, and my bull above 65. And there you go. So you can, when you do this, you can use strategy analyzer for different markets and find out the best settings you like. The bottom line, if I'm above 80, I'm bullish. Below 20, I'm bearish. I'm looking short the market below 20. A lot of uh, trade rooms, a lot of software, a, a lot of different educators out there, they use, a, they use the signal lines different. If it's above 80, it's overbought, and they're trying to short. They're counter trend trading the market. If it's below 20. They're trying to buy. I'm totally opposite. If I'm above 80, I'm looking to buy to take buy stops out. If it's below 20, I'm trying to short to take sell stops out because guess what? We're feeding off the counter trend traders. When they're buying, we're selling with the algo. When they're selling, we're buying. We're totally opposite of the public who counter trend trade the market. So you can put these where you want it. And I'm going to keep going over there this year on this. So this is this will help you out. I do have a trend filter in here also uh, for you to put in. You can put in whatever moving average you want. I have an 850 in there. Um, here's your targets. You put your targets 12, 24, 30 to 1,000. This just tells you this marries up with the ATRs down here. If, if I don't get to 12, my first target, if my first target doesn't hit 12, okay, and it hits my ATR of 63, then it's going to stop me out. If my stop is larger than than the ATR, I can put my stop to this though. Let's say I'm trading off of a, a 120 Renko. I can put my stop to 22 ticks, and then still have a 63 ATR. What that says is, if it goes against me by 22 ticks, which you need to be outside at least the size of your Renko size. By the way, if I use a 20 Renko, your hard stop should be two ticks at least outside of that Renko size. If I do 25, should be 27. If I use 30, should be 32, 35, 37, 40, 42, etc. But some traders, they don't want that. They'll put this all the way out, and they'll say, "Hey, I want the ATR to get me out, the trailing ATR." And what that means is, once it starts rolling, that trailing ATR is going to be your exit. Now, what's neat about this, you don't have to have a 63 ATR on your first two ATRs because your targets are small. So if you have small target targets, bring your ATRs down. Bring it down to 20 saying all four contracts are going to exit at 20 uh, ATR trail. So you don't have to wait for a 63 ATR to get you out. So you can do that until these targets are hit. As target two is going for target two, you can adjust your ATR that way also. And we're going to go over this in great detail. I've got a PDF I'm working on to show you how to do that. But I'm showing you the vers versatility with this. Um, your target four, I put out to 1,000 ticks only because, listen, it's showing you that as long as the 68 3 doesn't get violated, it's going to go as much as you want. But you can change a number of contracts, too. You can change it. Let's say you want to do one contract, and you want to go out to 1,000 ticks on your first contract, 1,000 ticks, and you want a 63 ATR. Now I open it up. Now what it's doing is one contract there. That one contract is going to stay long until your ATR is violated. And that stops you out here. It's going to stay short for one contract until that's stopped out there. So 
you can do that you can do that with that also by using that okay so that is the basic for using the indicator with the overall strategy to enter and it's just as simple of a click of a button now I know this is pretty generic in form right now but it gives you an idea of how you can use the automated strategy to click on to get your entry to get your trail to get your targets all right and you can customize it by telling it what to do with the bull and bear and we're going to go into more sophisticated ways how to do this strategies but you can you as lot and the other thing the bull and bear down here it needs to be checked guys and I put this in the PDF this needs to be checked then also your start and stop time that's when you want this to trade but this is very simple to use with the indicator because it's a simple click of the button either you can toggle it on or toggle it off when you're in a stronger or weaker position but you must know when a setup is going to come up on a first wave trade so it's very simple if I if I trend change from here green red to green I mean red to green and my larger signal line is above 80 which is a must and that's a must according to my methodology then what you do is you simply if you see that happen it happened the trade at 1550 you want to click and turn it on turn it on and now at nine minutes later it got you in a trade you want to click the trade off the automated system if what happens if you don't have a trade yet and a you come into a trend change which disqualifies the long anyway or B if this larger signal line jets right through 65 if I'm retracing and it just through 65 you just toggle it off it's not going to get you long anyway when you toggle it off because you have a threshold you're saying you have to, that larger signal line has to stay above 80 so it's not like you got to hurry up and turn it off right away because it's already you already told it to you already told the the automated uh, management software you already told it your threshold is right here so that's where your threshold is whatever you put it in and I show you how to do that um, I show you how to do that in the um, in the room in the trade room so let's go into this then real quick and Gerald you can shut this off for our first conference call on first way trades so let's go to the S&P today I just want to show you when you're in a stronger position or weaker position this is my 20 Rinko chart, the 120.20. This is my 113.13. All right. I want you to notice two things. I want you to notice when these arrows fire off, these will fire automated uh, signals on your speakers. I want you to notice the strength of the market. Are you in a stronger or weaker position? Watch the large signal line, the thick one. Is it above? Is it above right there above 80? Yes. Look at the smaller signal line. Does it say above 65 when this arrow fires? Yes. This is a high probability setup because guess what? We're above my shallow retracement in the S&P. It's a hell of a setup. This happened at 931 this morning, 932, 4527, all the way up to 4551. All right. So you get those big dynamic moves, right? That's a 20, what, 3, 24 point potential setup on the S&P off that signal line look at the next strong position it got into over here my large signal line was pegged up my smaller signal line was above 80 they're both above 80 when the arrow fires am I above my shallow retracement yes this is a perfect S&P setup I got momentum what happens you have a entry of 4540 plus or minus a few ticks and it goes high as 51, 11 and a half point S&P point run. Just because you're in a stronger position over here. If you want to turn on the auto system, if you get into a stronger position here at 14.15, the entry was at, what, 45 minutes later or so, I believe. Let's see, where was it? So 14.15, you could turn the auto entry on, and it pulled you in at 15 so about 45 minutes later as long as that large signal line stays above 80 you can leave your automated 
entry system on. If you violate and I get below 80 on my large signal line, turn the automated order, order entry system off. Same thing on the smaller Renko sizes. We had some nice closing on this. You look at these two automated arrows that came up. They're in a stronger position. They were above my shallow zone, which is very accurate for continuations. These two arrows produce great trades because guess what? My largest signal line, the most important, has to at least stay above 65. It came right down to 65. Continuation, continuation off the smaller Rinko. And then you get that nice little push. And so that's a 38 to 51, and that's 45 to 25. 